Jefferson County indoor legislative barbecue. Obviously, we've gone virtual this year, and we're so glad that so many of you have joined us this evening. My name is Chris Lynn. I'm the president and CEO of Seniors Resource Center. We are so happy to host the event this evening, along with our great partners at Developmental Disabilities Resource Center, DDRC, Family Tree, and Jefferson Center. Each of our agencies have grown up here in Jefferson County, and together we've been serving this community for over a combined 200 plus years. Seniors Resource Center, DDRC, Family Tree, and Jefferson Center assist thousands of individuals and families each year throughout Jefferson County. Our services are available for all who need them. Many of our folks we work with may be from low-income homes, and we work to promote opportunities and inclusion for those with developmental disabilities, those seeking to escape domestic violence, child abuse, and neglect, homelessness, those who have mental health and substance use disorder needs, and people 60 and older looking to remain engaged in our community and living independently in their own homes. 20 years ago, our organizations realized the importance of bringing the voices and needs of our community to the attention of our legislators. We came together to make that happen. And each year since then, we've invited Jefferson County incumbents and candidates to come and meet our constituents, traditionally at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds, to hear our concerns and to address the audience. This has become an opportunity that many candidates have come to look forward to. And tonight, as always, we appreciate their willingness to make time in their schedules to connect and engage with all of us. So this is an important election year. And even though we're not able to be together in person, we appreciate that technology allows us the ability to come together virtually and continue this tradition of con connecting with our candidates, hearing from them regarding the issues that impact our communities. But before that, you'll get to hear from each of my colleagues about our respective organizations. And after that, you'll get to hear from our candidates. To get started this evening, please join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. You'll all be unmuted for just a few moments during the pledge and then remute afterwards. Are we ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. So now you're going to have an opportunity to hear from each of my colleagues who lead these vital organizations. They work hand in hand with their dedicated and professional staff to deliver the vital programs and services that make a difference in the lives of people right here in Jefferson County. Our four organizations take turns as the lead host for this annual event, and this year is Seniors Resource Center turn. So with that honor, I will lead off, after which you'll hear then from Kiara Kinsler of Jefferson Center, Beverly Winters of DDRC, and Scott Shields of Family Tree. So let me tell you a little bit about Seniors Resource Center. Since 1978, SRC has provided vital services to older adults and their families and their caregivers, allowing them to remain living independently in their homes, thriving within the communities of their choice. And as our population continues to age, especially here in Jefferson County, which is the fastest growing aging population in our state, the need for our services continues to grow. Our wraparound adult day, respite, and in-home care services are coordinated to ensure that our clients have the support they need to maintain their independence, reducing costly institutionalization, and that families and caregivers age successfully. COVID-19 has had a very real impact on our organization, as I'm sure you're going to hear from my colleagues. For us here, our on-site day centers were closed March 18th and remain closed. Unfortunately, we had to lay off 80% of our staff and we had to restrict our services to critical needs only during a time when the needs were rising. At SRC, we know that older adults are at high risk for food insecurity. The pandemic increased that disparity for individuals 65 and older, those most at risk to the virus who are told to shelter at home for their own safety. 
And for many, that means limiting or eliminating shopping trips. And early on, we heard from one of our clients who already had not eaten for two days. So we quickly responded by delivering 10 days of fresh frozen meals prepared by our day center chef and his team. And the need grew and we developed a program to help during this uncertain time to support our community's elderly, their weekly um, needs of food and supplies. Since March, we've delivered nearly 20,000 meals along with hygiene and household supplies. We also continue to serve our adult day families by leveraging technology to reduce isolation by providing engaging activities for day clients and respite for their caregivers. Our amazing staff remain committed to serving our community. We're using this time to more deeply focus on our vision of providing outstanding care through a holistic approach of serving older adults by providing help around the home, help during the day and help for their caregivers as well. We're creating strategic partnerships with other community partners. Currently we're increasing our adult day without walls and in-home respite care, homemaking and chores assistance, hiring dedicated individuals and preparing our day centers to re-welcome our clients with appropriate safety measures in place when time comes. So moving forward, SRC, as with all of our organizations, want to collaborate more effectively with our legislators by informing them of the needs of the vulnerable and marginalized individuals we serve while working together more effectively to meet those needs together. Now more than ever, creating those effective relationships across all of our constituencies will be crucial to the survival of our organizations, which makes for a healthier Jefferson County for all. So now I'd like to turn it over to my current uh, friend and colleague, Kiara Kunzler at Jefferson Center. Thank you, Chris. Um, and it is, it is just inspiring to hear um, how, how rapidly um, your organization has been able to adapt and evolve and really meet the, the ongoing needs of the community um, during such a difficult time. And I know it's been a challenging time um, for all nonprofits and direct service providers. And, and I'm uh, continuously just moved and inspired by the work that, that this group of, of partners and so many uh, community partners around Jefferson County do. Um, as Chris said, I'm the, Dr. Kiara Kunzler. I'm the CEO at Jefferson Center. Um, and we're really proud to be a part of this incredible group of dedicated community partners um, who, as you've heard, really come together to support the well being and the social needs of the community. Um, for those that don't know us, Jefferson Center is a nonprofit community focused mental health and substance use treatment provider. And we've served the communities of Jefferson, Clear Creek, and Gilpin counties for more than 60 years. So you may be aware that, that in years past, about one in five people would typically experience a mental health challenge. Um, but during these unusual times that we're living in, many of us are experiencing increased stress, anxiety, depression. Um, many are grieving from loss of loved ones um, and loss of the social connection. And so we know that that one in five statistic begins to look more like five in five. Job loss and housing stressors and homelessness um, the financial impacts of this pandemic are really taking their toll. Um, parents, many of you on the call um, are parents and feeling the pressure of creating classrooms at home while being asked to work uh, remotely, um, care for your families and, and keep loved ones safe and healthy. The true impact of this pandemic on our mental and emotional health um, really may not be realized for, for quite some time. Every day Jefferson Center offers hope and support to people who are dealing with some of life's toughest challenges. With mental health care and substance use treatment, connections to community resources, including housing and benefits, we're providing critical care when and where people need it. Um, during this pandemic um, and continuing into the future, these services are offered uh, both through, through virtual formats, such as telehealth, as well as in-person services, including our 24 seven crisis services, which is still open and available um, in person 24 hours a day. And with programs that are designed for, for veterans, for children and families, victims of trauma, seniors, and many others, we're working to meet the unique needs of so many people in our community. Last year, Jefferson Center served more than 34,000 people through our mental health and substance use treatment and our prevention and wellness programs. And we reached thousands more through mental health first aid, suicide prevention training, 
free webinars and other community outreach programs that are so important for catching people upstream and getting people the help and support that they need early on in their process. And we're committed to building awareness about the realities and the prevalence of mental health struggles and substance use disorders and truly reducing stigma that prevents people from reaching out for help when they need it. The more that we talk about this, the more that people feel comfortable coming into our doors, asking for help or reaching out to a friend who might be able to, to make that link for them. The need in our community is undeniable and that need will continue to grow and we're already seeing that grow during this pandemic. While this year's election is a big one, as it will determine who will become our, our next president, there are a number of additional critically important positions and issues, and your vote matters on issues affecting housing, education, employment, and health care. And educating yourself about the issues that matter to you is an important step. So thank you so much for everyone being here tonight. Thank you uh, so much for the elected officials who support our communities and our state. We appreciate all of our partnerships um, in the community that work to, to support the work that we do and help carry the message that mental health and substance use services are vital to the health of our community. On behalf of Jefferson Center for Mental Health, our clients, our board and our staff, um, a huge thanks to all of you for engaging with us tonight. Um, and now I'd like to, to introduce um, our friend and partner, um, Beverly Winters, the Executive Director at DDRC. Thank you so much. Hello. It is so nice to be with the great Jeffco community this evening. We can feel the virtual energy. DDRC is proud to be a co-sponsor of this great event and our work with so many of you throughout the year. The mission of DDRC is to create opportunities for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families to participate fully in the community. DDRC is a nonprofit and a community center board serving over 4,500 children and adults through the stages of their lives and according to their needs, from intermittent support to intensive care. Our service coordinators and case managers help with connecting people with services and community resources. Our direct services include early intervention therapies, behavioral services, many in-home supports, a variety of day program, employment and residential options, and general assistance in daily life. And a vital part of what we do is to support families with the additional financial physical and emotional challenges. Our impact includes both small and big miracles, such as helping a child learn to talk or walk, helping someone find and keep a job, or finding the right residential option to give peace of mind to parents who are experiencing their own challenges. Truly amazing work. We are particularly proud of our work keeping services in place wherever possible during COVID with prudent measures, telehealth and virtual services, and a very careful reopening of our group day program services. The partnership we have with the people we serve in determining the best service options, especially during these times, has been highly successful. This year, has been a challenging budget year for all of us. And we appreciate the work of our legislators to keep funding for services in place as much as possible. And we look forward to working again on initiatives such as ending the long waiting list for residential services. The partnership we have with our county and state representatives and officials is vital to all we do and the collaboration we have with other nonprofits, businesses, foundations, our donors, allows us to help people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have access to the same services that we all rely on for health, wellness, and general enjoyment. Funding, policy, and flexibility that supports these services is where we interface with these key decision makers here tonight. Thanks so much for your support. Now let's turn to my colleague, Scott from Family Tree. 
Thank you so much, Beverly, and thanks for that, that great description of DDRC. As, as many of you know, Family Tree has been here in the community for over 40 years, and we've directed our services to focus on the interconnected issues of child abuse and neglect, domestic violence and homelessness, helping people increase their safety, stability, and economic security. Our services have been vitally important over these four decades, but certainly during the year ravaged by coronavirus, the demand is now vast, as we've already heard from my colleagues. Recent requests for services in several family tree programs have increased by 30%, more than 75%, and in some cases, nearly 90% over last year. I wanna take this moment to recognize and thank the incredible Family Tree team for their unwavering dedication and resilience, for finding new ways to work with the community and to help people during these unprecedented times and working so diligently to meet this unprecedented demand. They continue to, to believe that no matter what, everyone deserves the opportunity to create better lives for themselves. This team has provided face-to-face -face services for nearly 5,000 people last year. And to illustrate some of the impact of our programs, please allow these, these examples. Last year, 90% of respondents in Family Tree's domestic violence programs indicated that we helped them increase the safety of themselves and that of their children. And in our homelessness program, 78% of those who exited were in, in safe and stable housing. And in Family Tree's clinical program, designed to intervene and stabilize adolescents and their families, 97% of these children were still safely in their homes 12 months after exiting from that program. While navigating this challenging environment, we continue to move forward. Last year, Family Tree opened our new goals program, a residential program for families experiencing homelessness. And this year during the pandemic, we completed facility renovations that are now allowing a more than threefold program expansion. As many of you know, and I'm sure you, you share this sentiment, we're eagerly awaiting the soon opening of the Porchlight Family Justice Center here in Jefferson County a little bit later this year, and the opportunity to expand and enhance our community partnerships and especially services for domestic violence survivors in our community. And on a little bit more personal note for Family Tree, earlier this year, we finished a year long ambitious initiative we call the Continuous Improvement Project an effort that, inform, that was informed by our team members throughout the organization, but validated and fine-tuned with input from those we serve. And this will further our efforts to understand how our programs work best so we can build upon those strengths. I wanna take a moment just to thank all of our elected officials and candidates tonight who took the time to be with us and to address the important issues that affect our county and the region. Also a, a sincere appreciation to Jefferson County Human Services and our County Board of Commissioners, whose support and partnership with Family Tree and investment in our community has been so important. And again, I wanna thank all of our partners this evening for this legislative barbecue, the 20th annual legislative barbecue, Developmental Disabilities Resource Center, Jefferson Center, and Seniors Resource Center, and our shared value as organizations in making the community a better place for everyone. You may be able to see from my Zoom background um, that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so I'd like to just take a quick moment uh, to, to allow this to serve as a reminder of the grit and the resilience that domestic violence survivors have as they take that arduous step of putting the safety of themselves and their loved ones at the forefront of their decisions and actions with more uncertainty right now than ever before. Again, I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight. And I wanna echo my colleagues in saying, this is an incredibly important year to make sure you're updated and uh, knowledgeable about the issues, about the policies and about the candidates. And this is an important year for voting and I encourage everyone to do so. I'll turn the program back over to Chris Lynn. Thank you. Scott, thank you so much. Beverly, Kiara, thank you to you as well. We encourage you all to visit our websites and reach out to each organization to learn more about the important work that we all do. So here's how our evening will proceed from here. We've developed questions that address interrelated areas of importance to the individuals served by our organizations, as well as our staff and boards, and have invited the candidates to address them. The questions deal with challenges faced by the people we serve who represent vulnerable and marginalized populations, limited access to resources. The candidates will have two minutes 
to respond and will be timed. The same question was given to candidates seeking the same office, so each opponent will respond to the same question. Incumbents will go first, then the challengers. After each answers the question, as their time allows, they may choose to address the missions of our nonprofits or other priorities they wish to share. But before we move on with that, we'd like to do a quick poll. We'd like to see who's here with us tonight. So you're gonna see this poll pop up, there it is. And if you can just uh, take a quick few seconds and answer these questions for us, it's gonna give us a great idea of who's actually here and uh, who we're talking with this evening. What do you think, Chris? Let's see the yeah. results. So are we good? So let's go ahead and see what our results are here. All right. So it looks like we have a great representation from the 35 to 55 year old crowd, which is awesome. Glad to see that. And it looks like our Arvada and Lakewood participants are even. Looks like we have a good number of folks that also are not in Jefferson County, which is great. And then you can see the members engaged with the, our agencies that DDRC is, is leading the pack there. So thank you all for taking a few moments to complete the poll and, and see who's here tonight. So as we move on, these uh, in the indoor barbecues have become so popular, we get a chance to gather as a community. Um, and we all wanted to also um, take the chance that since we're not gathered together and sharing a meal together like we usually do at the fairgrounds, we wanted to make sure that we are still getting the barbecue feel here and um, support our Jeffco businesses at the same time. So we're gonna be drawing winners for gift certificates from Jeffco's finest barbecue restaurants throughout the evening. And uh, SRC will kick off the first drawing for two $50 gift certificates from Bennett's Barbecue over on 52nd Avenue in Arvada. So let's see here who our winners are gonna be this evening. Let's see, our first one is Regina Rooney. And the next is Olivia Marks. So congratulations to Regina and Olivia. Uh, your winning gift cards will be sent to the name and address that you provided when you registered. All right, thank you so much. So now let's turn to our candidates for the US House of Representatives. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We really do look forward to hearing from you. You all received the same question concerning health and we'll start the timer after I e ask each of you a question. So let's get started with District 1, uh, which is Diana DeGette and Shane Bowling. And unfortunately, Representative DeGette, who currently holds the office, was unable to join us this evening. Her challenger, uh, candidate Shane Bowling, is here. Candidate Bowling, the question to you concerning health. How will you help ensure low income, at risk, and vulnerable populations will have access to appropriate and timely care, both physical and mental health? Okay. Well, thank you for being patient with us. Um, I think we're gonna move along and we'll go to District 2, uh, Rep Representative Joe Nagus and Charlie Wynn. Uh, Representative Joe Nagus holds the office and we'll go first. Representative Nagus, your question concerns health. How will you help ensure low income, at risk and vulnerable populations will have access to appropriate and timely care, both physical and mental health? Well, uh, good evening. Thanks for the question. Thanks for uh, bringing us all together virtually. I wish we were together in person, enjoying some of that barbecue as we typically do at this event, but nonetheless, um, it's wonderful to see you all. And of course, uh, the organizations that help put together this event, uh, Seniors Resource Center, DDRC, Family Tree, Jefferson Center, play a real pivotal role with respect to this particular question in terms of providing both the physical 
uh, and mental health resources to our community. Uh, look, I, the pandemic has only illuminated the importance of healthcare access for each of our communities. It's highlighted the inequities in our system uh, for many in our communities, uh, including here in Jefferson County, healthcare costs are too high. And uh, I believe we must address this holistically to ensure that every Coloradan, every American uh, can get access to the care that they need without you know, making difficult financial decisions or God forbid, uh, going bankrupt. Uh, with respect to the current crisis, uh, COVID-19, as a member of House leadership uh, in Washington, I've worked with my colleagues in Congress to push for free COVID-19 testing for everyone to ensure that we invest in treatment, contact tracing, paid leave so that all those who are infected with the virus can get the care they need. Uh, I also introduced legislation to ensure that uh, medical debt is not reported, to ensure that we're not leaving folks with an added burden down the road. And, and of course, working on other very important and critical issues like lowering the cost of prescription drugs, lowering premiums, protecting individuals with pre-existing conditions. Um, as was mentioned in the, the question, I just I think it's important to note, access to mental health care is just as critical, especially during this time, during this current health care crisis. Uh, that's why I advocated for the highest level of funding feasible uh, for life-saving mental health and suicide prevention programs in the U.S. House, and I'll continue to do so. Uh, here in Colorado, I think you all know the statistics, growing rates of suicide, in particular youth suicide, causing tremendous grief and hardship in our communities. Um, so uh, this, in my view, requires a, a large scale response on behalf of our federal government, working with our local officials like the Jefferson County commissioners and our wonderful state legislators so that we have uh, all, all, uh, all, uh, all of us working together collectively to address this critical issue. Thanks again for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Great, thank you so much, Representative Nagus. I appreciate it. Uh, the the uh, challenger for this office, Dr. Charlie Wynn, was unable to attend this evening. And I'm checking to see uh, if his campaign manager, Aaron Novi, is here. Yep, I'm here. Okay, great. Great, Aaron. Thank you so much. Can you please share uh, candidate Wynn's thoughts on the same question concerning health? How will you help ensure low income, at risk, vulnerable populations will have access to appropriate and timely care, both physical and mental health. Absolutely, and thanks for letting me step in for Dr. Wynn today. There's a reason why lifelong Democrats are supporting Dr. Wynn and indeed volunteering for him. Um, that's because he started his public service first as a US Navy flight surgeon and went on to command a Navy hospital and later on oversaw an entire hospital system. Respectfully, our opponent just doesn't have the same level of experience to truly increase access to health resources. Dr. Wynn can go on for hours and hours discussing this at length. Um, in fact, our opponent, when he was a regent at CU, tuition went up every year. Our opponent is a lawyer and there are nearly 200 of those in Congress. Uh, out of the 435 members in the House of Representatives, only 13 are doctors. We need more doctors now more than ever, especially during the pandemic. Uh, the big solution that Dr. Wynn's thinking to really help our country reach the next level of health care for everybody is to create a permanent standing committee on health in Congress. There's a standing committee on the military, there's one on banking, there's one on veterans issues, but there's not one on health. It's a subcommittee nestled under science. With only 12, 24 staffers that already work on the Hill, they could all be put together under a House committee on health. And something like that is what Joan Hughes could propose on day one. Dr. Wynn is a physician. He has a lot of opinions on this. I'm not able to get into it all because my background's political science. It's, it's just not my issue. But if you want to know more, visit our webpage, Win for Colorado. That's Win with two N for Colorado.com. Or check us out on Facebook and social media. It's an important election this year to bring doctors in, and we hope to have your support. Thank you very much for letting us attend. And I'm sorry I missed out on some really good barbecue. Aaron, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. All right, now on to House District 7, uh, Representative Ed Perlmutter and Charles Casper Stockholm. And uh, unfortunately, Congressman Perlmutter, who currently holds the office, was unable to join us this evening. His challenger, candidate Charles Casper Stockham, is here. So candidate Stockham, how will you help ensure low-income, at-risk, vulnerable populations have access to appropriate and timely care with both physical and mental health? 
Absolutely. So I appreciate the question and thank you to the Senior Resource Center, the Family Tree, Jefferson Center, and the DDRC. Um, I live in a, um, in a family that has a child with special needs. So we're a special needs family. And one of the blessings that we've been able to do is actually shop around for a day program that we enjoy uh, to send our child to. And I think when it comes to healthcare, I think most of us want to be able to shop around to get the best possible care available to us. And a one size fits all government program is not, in my opinion, the best way to do that. The best way to do that is to allow for the free market to operate in the healthcare arena and allow for me as a family, as, a, um, 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 as someone that needs uh, healthcare or specialized healthcare to be able to shop around to get that. Maybe that's across state lines. Maybe that's uh, in another um, um, county or what have you. But locking me down into a specific healthcare plan that does not fit my family's needs is just like putting my child into a, a daycare facility that we don't like. <laughs> we love the facility we're in now and we wanna be able to shop around for healthcare just like we shop around for our daycare services. So um, at the end of the day, it needs to be a flexible plan that allows for um, families to be able to choose where they get the healthcare from and the cost involved with that healthcare, all those costs need to be very transparent. And right now they're not, which is driving up the cost of healthcare as well. So, um, and then for those folks that are not uh, able to afford those plans, then we need to have a safety net. And I believe the current government systems work for, for those individuals. So thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us this evening. Okay, we want to say thank you to our candidates and representatives for your participation and for taking the time to address our constituents. I want to quickly remind everyone, if you would please add your house district number to your name, your screen name, so we can see where everyone is at, that would be fantastic. And that also is going to help us to put people in breakout rooms that are coming up shortly. So now I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Kiara Kunzler with Jefferson Center who will facilitate the office of the Jeffco Board of County Commissioners. Kiara, it's all yours. Thank you, Chris. Um, there can certainly be a lot of confusion around the process of registering to vote, um, but this is an important first step in exercising your right to vote and to really impact the direction of your community, your state, your country. So for our second poll of the evening, we would like to know, are you registered to vote? And uh, your choices are yes, no, or maybe. Got a lot of yeses coming in strong. A lot of yeses, no, not a single no so far. Well, that is, that is excellent. We are right where we need to be. So 100% um, of the folks that responded are registered to vote. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and please um, advocate for those that you know, your family, your friends, um, to register to vote early um, and uh, register early so you can vote as soon as possible. Um, you can always register online at, at votejeffco.com and, and pass that along for, for sort of ease of registration um, to anyone that you know that needs that assistance. Okay, so moving us along, tonight I have the honor of facilitating our discussion with the candidates uh, for Jefferson County Commissioners and the candidates for our Jefferson County District Attorney. Um, Jefferson Center really values the strong partners that we have had with our Jeffco commissioners and the district attorney, um, which have been really critical to the work that we do. Um, and then I, I know that our other host partners have experienced that, that same um, over many, many years of working together. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and begin. As was stated previously, each speaker has two minutes, which can be tracked by watching the on-screen timer. Um, so we'll start off by uh, our commissioner, Leslie Dahlkemper, um, joining us tonight from District 3. 
Um, Commissioner Dahlkemper is not up for re-election this year, um, and we're looking forward to hearing from her. So my question for you, Commissioner, is how do you see the role of the county as a whole in collaborating with the local nonprofits, and how might we work together? And as time for, permits, you're wel welcome to bring in other ideas um, that you feel are relevant to, to the priorities that you have and to our audience. Great, thanks so much, Kiera. And hello, everyone. I'm Jeffco Commissioner Leslie Dahlkemper. It's so good to see you. I hope you're well. I hope you're staying healthy during these challenging times as we're all finding our new normal. You know, we've, mother, we've weathered many crises in Jefferson County, and this is certainly no exception. We're working through this together, and that is thanks in part to the leadership, to the resilience, and the innovation of the very nonprofits who are hosting tonight's event. So thank you, DDRC, SRC, Family Tree, and Jefferson Center. Let me share a little more with you about how Jefferson County collaborates with our nonprofits. Jeffco received $107 million in CARES Act dollars or federal funds to help with the COVID-19 response and recovery. Commissioners set aside nearly $40 million to provide assistance to our communities. That includes dollars for nonprofits, for food programs, plus funding for our cities and for our businesses. Now, these dollars will help our nonprofits provide food and rental assistance to our neighbors in need. Commissioners, other county elected officials, appointed officials, state legislators, mayors, and even members of our chambers of commerce have signed a letter to the Colorado congressional delegation urging them to extend the deadline for spending CARES Act money. And a huge shout out to Congressman Nagus, Perlmutter, to get other members of our Colorado congressional de delegation for all the work that they're doing on this front to secure those CARES Act dollars. We know nonprofits are seeing a 30% increase in new clients and the demand for rental assistance is growing. Commissioner Tai and I also serve on the Jeffco Food Task Force to troubleshoot challenges facing our local food banks. All three commissioners take these issues seriously. As a quick aside, we're gonna miss Commissioner Tai, who's term limited this year. And as you know, he's been a fierce advocate for our nonprofits. Nonprofits are the heartbeat of our community. And that's why commissioners also allocated 1.8 million in funding in to nearly a dozen nonprofits this year. We support you 100%. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Dolcumber. I really appreciate your passion and support for all of the nonprofits and, and everything that the commissioners have done um, to allocate those funding. All right, now let's turn to the race in District 1. Um, with us tonight are candidates uh, Commissioner Libby Zabo and State House Representative Tracy Kraftgarp and Hans Romer. Welcome, all of you. So Commissioner Zabo, um, you'll be first to answer this question. Um, the COVID pandemic and the resulting downturn in the economy will strain the county's budget. Um, what approaches will you take to work collaboratively with the community organizations here today in order to meet the needs of the individuals we serve so they aren't left behind? Commissioner? Well, good, good evening. It is so good to see you all. Chris, Kiara, Beverly, Scott, I miss seeing you in per person, but you guys are such an integral part of Jefferson County and what we do. And I just wanna say thank you for that. You know, in these unprecedented times, we have many challenges, but many challenges can lead to new and great outcomes. As we see more and more businesses not being able to survive, which will in turn affect the county's budget in many ways. More than ever, we need to work together and find efficient ways to keep these vulnerable populations with the services they so need and count on. And Jeffco does that really well. We need to come together and figure out and prioritize the issues that um, we have and put our heads together on we can, how we can all collaboratively solve them. Like for example, Jeffco Connections is a great example where cities, county leadership, elected officials and nonprofits all work together to find various solutions to our vulnerable population's needs. Another example is working with the local housing authority and CASA, which is a nonprofit also, to collaborate on behalf of youth exiting out of foster care. So they have what they need to be successful in life while encouraging new partnerships and all of us working together 
um, with other nonprofit groups. Porchlight is another great example of collaboration that we are so excited about. You know, we can't forget the Community First Foundation that matches the dollars we raise and get from other entities. These are successful models that we have created here in Jeffco that not only are most vulnerable for our most vulnerable, but for other counties who can replicate these. Government cannot do everything, but I'm committed to working with you all to finding new and innovating solutions and encouraging new partnerships, whether they are the nonprofit in the nonprofit world, other governmental entities, or our faith-based organization. And let's not forget the neighbors that pitch in to get involved to help. They are all crucial parts of our county, and we need to make sure we take care of these vulnerable populations using all resources at hand. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you tonight. I'm Commissioner Libby Zabo in District 1. Thank you, Commissioner. Representative Kraft Tharp, I will ask you the same question. The COVID pandemic and the resulting downturn in the economy will strain the county's budget. What approaches will you take to work collaboratively with the community organizations here today in order to meet the needs of the individuals we serve so they aren't left behind? Representative? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Kira. I'm Tracy Kraft Tharp. I'm the current state representative in House District 29, which is north and east Arvada. Jefferson County part of Westminster. I'm termed out, I'm a candidate for a county commissioner out of District 1. In Jefferson County, everybody votes for the county commissioners. So there are two county commissioner seats that are open, one in uh, District 1 and one in District 2. So everybody gets to vote. I'm thrilled to be here. I have, this has been one of my favorite events every year. So last year, I made an announcement that the governor did an executive order to form a task force to, put, to address our behavioral health needs. And he wanted some bold recommenda recommendations. So Kira, this is the perfect question because I get to make the announcement. I was afraid that you were going to. So that behavioral health task force, which I was a member of appointed by the governor, met for the last year and had um, heard public testimony from many of you around what do we need, not only in our behavioral health system, but in all of our systems. And we made some bold recommendations to the governor to increase access and quality. So Colorado is going to be looking at forming a behavioral health administration, which looks at that we don't work in silos. How can we work in a comprehensive, integrated manner so there's no wrong door? So if you are somebody that goes in that door and you need housing services, you need food services, you need behavioral health services, whatever services you need, that organization will integrate funding, will integrate services. In addition, one of the other recommendations is to do case coordination on the local level. So Jefferson County will be coordinating all of our different agencies to provide case coordination on the service level and on the administrative level. It's very exciting, especially in times of COVID and tight budgetary matters. So thank you very much. I'm Tracy Kraft Tharp. I'm a candidate for a county commissioner, District 1. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kraft Tharp. Mr. Romer, please respond to the same question. The COVID pandemic and the resulting downturn in the economy will strain the county's budget. What approaches will you take to work collaboratively with the community organizations here today in order to meet the needs of the individuals we serve so they are not left behind? Mr. Romer? Do we have Mr. Romer? Okay, I'm not I'm not hearing anyone, so we will move along. All right. Um, in District Two. We have an open seat to be vacated by Commissioner Casey Tai, as uh, Commissioner Dahlkemper mentioned, I and mean, he is term limited. Looking to fill this seat are candidates Andy Kerr and Joni Inman. So let's hear from these two candidates. I'll start with Mr. Kerr. 
The COVID pandemic and the resulting downturn in the economy will strain the county's budget. What approaches will you take to work collaboratively with the community organizations to help the individuals we serve? Great, uh, thank you so much. And thanks for having us this evening. I, I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, chat with everyone and also to, to hear from everyone because I think that's the most important thing is that we are hearing from everyone in our community. Uh, let me say that, that one thing I uh, really appreciate uh, from uh, your nonprofit uh, groups is when I was in the legislature and I served when we were making some very, very tough budget cuts over the years, because of course in Colorado, we, we balance our budget and those uh, budget cuts, we would reach out to every impacted group, every impacted uh, organization to ask where, where we're gonna have to make cuts, uh, what works for you? And there are many, many groups and organizations that would come back and say, well, we're just too important. You can't touch us. You, you know, we're not going to give you any recommendations. But I, re I remember sitting down with uh, the, the clients you serve and the, the leaders in your organizations who would say, we understand that there will be cuts. Here's where the cuts will least impact our services. And that's what I plan to do. Jefferson County was already facing budget cuts even before uh, COVID. And it's really important that we all work together, we find the common ground to, to work together. Uh, another uh, point of view I wanna bring in is that as, as a teacher, and I teach at Jeffco's Virtual Academy, which is Jeffco's online school. I, I was doing online school before everyone was. Um, we often have very impacted individuals. And it is so important that we are reaching out beyond the, 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 the new technology, beyond Zoom, beyond everything else, really reaching out one-to-one -one and re because many of the families that are most impacted through this crisis don't have easy access to technology. And I wanna make sure that these families and many of the families uh, that you serve uh, have access. Thank you so much, Andy Kerr running for Jefferson County Commissioner District 2. And I have to pop off for parent-teacher conferences, thanks. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. And next we have Joni Inman. Um, would you please respond to the same question? Um, the COVID pandemic and the resulting downturn in the economy will strain the county's budget. What approaches will you take to work collaboratively with the community organizations here today in order to meet the needs of the individuals we serve? Thank you for that question. And it's exciting for me to um, be on here with Family Tree because I was a newspaper reporter when Family Tree was founded. I interviewed Rich Carlos and to see it as it is today is great. And the other three organizations all do just wonderful work as well. One of my top priorities is to empower families in need. And I look at these four organizations and I see each helping in their own way, families in need. I also think it's a prime, primary responsibility along with public safety for government to help our most vulnerable populations. There's no doubt that your organizations do good work and there's also no doubt that the COVID crisis will result in harder to find private donations and reductions in government funding. Need does not go away and in fact it increases. There are two very specific things I think we can help with. The first is to be outspoken advocates and connectors being an elected official opens doors, and I'm happy to help walk through those doors with any one of these four organizations and seek support from potential donors, lending my name and the office to the mission. The second is if, or rather when, we have to cut county financial support in some way, I would look at investing in a dedicated staff member to help search for, navigate potential grant opportunities for established Jefferson County organizations such as the four represented here. A couple of you may have someone dedicated on your staff, but not all do. If we have to cut direct funding, I would be willing to use some of that savings for the development of a dedicated county person, staff person to assist in connecting and identifying available grant dollars. Thank you so much. 
to the Senior Resource Center, DDRC, Family Free and Jefferson Center for Mental Health. And by the way, I wrote about two of you in my weekly newsletter this week, and I'm not going to tell you which two you're going to have to read it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joni Inman. Thank you to all of the, the commissioner candidates. We really appreciate you being with us tonight. In the race for DA, we have two new candidates as well, Matthew Durkin and Alexis King. Welcome to you both. I'll remind you that you have two minutes to respond and the timer on the screen will help you monitor your time. Let's begin with Matthew Durkin. How do you balance community safety while also meeting the needs of our most vulnerable and marginalized community members? Well, thank you so much for this opportunity to participate in this historic uh, barbecue. Uh, I am humbled to be a part of this process. These organizations are so incredible and they have such a major and positive impact on our community. And in fact, DDRC has had a huge impact in my family. Uh, we are a special needs family as well. And we are just so thankful to have had the services of DDRC. Community safety and protecting the vulnerable in our communities are one in the same. And in fact, protecting the most vulnerable in our community is at the core of what we do in the district attorney's office for Jefferson and Gilpin counties where I am currently a chief DA and where I've served for 25 years in the community in which I was born and raised. I recall so many cases over the years. I recall a case in which uh, the only time I've seen an emergency room physician cry was when he was describing the agony that uh, a senior had gone through who was bedbound, who was receiving services from the senior resource center, uh, but was still subject to the neglect of his own family. I recall working with DDRC in a, in a uh, developmentally disabled adult who was isolated and then abused, working with DDRC to get through that case, work with that victim to seek justice in that situation. And as a chief DA in the office, I've worked with Family Tree on a daily basis. We have a 13% increase in domestic violence cases just this year alone. And we are thrilled to announce or thrilled for, to expect the opening of the Porchlight Family Justice Center to drive that very disturbing trend down to provide services to our community. So I look forward to continuing to protect the most vulnerable in our community as your next district attorney. My name is Matthew Durkin. Please go to durkinforda.com. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now we'll move to Alexis King. Please respond to the same question. How do you balance community safety while also meeting the needs of our most vulnerable and marginalized community members? Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. This is my second year um, participating and I'm really uh, happy to see the turnout despite our distance from each other. I became a district attorney after my experience in the nonprofit in the community where I grew up in Colorado Springs. In working in Tessa, uh, at Tessa, I really saw the impact that prosecutors had on the safety of survivors of both domestic violence, sex assault, and child abuse. That's what took me to law school. And uh, as a district attorney, I really focused on the specialized knowledge that it takes to protect our most vulnerable and also serve those that are um, at, at risk in our community. I worked for four years with our juvenile mental health court. And that was always a balance of seeking the best services to stabilize folks in the community, not only the child, but also their family and also to consider what a successful outcome was for each and every individual that came before us while balancing that with any survivor's needs and support as well. My specialized, specialized knowledge continued into the human trafficking realm, where I again work collaboratively across the county to make sure we were serving our most vulnerable while also dealing with um, very predatory behavior within the community. Uh, I have a track record as a collaborative leader and I will bring that to our district attorney's office. Because what we know is that we must 
uh, appropriately address the underlying needs of both victims and those accused of crime in the community to make sure that we are serving them, stabilizing them, and moving forward with a safer and healthier community for everyone. Please check me out at alexisforda.com. I'd love to answer any follow-up questions that you may have following this event. I won't be able to stay on with you much longer this evening, but I do appreciate the opportunity and look forward to working with you uh, soon. Thank you to both of our district attorney candidates and once again to our candidates for county commissioner. We really appreciate you all being here tonight and we look forward to the continued partnership to serve Jefferson County residents. Okay, it's time for another barbecue gift card drawing. Um, Jefferson Center has donated two gift cards to Moe's Original Barbecue. And the winners are Daniel Zhang and Linda Hansen. Congratulations. Your gift card will be mailed um, to the name and address you provided when you registered. Okay, um, for the remaining part of the evening, we're going to move into smaller groups of house districts. Uh, many of you identified your house district in your registration, and in some cases, you've left the decision up to us. Um, so feel free to just take two minutes to stand up, to stretch, um, and while we move you into breakout rooms, um, we'll only, only take about two minutes for the stretching and moving about so you don't miss anything. <laughs> 